ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan with your July Climate Watch update brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz. Let's get into the forecast because this month is defined by a massive area of high pressure. It's a little bit like what we saw back in May, where we had a huge block of high pressure stuck south of Adelaide next to Tasmania, and it was there for a good couple of weeks, if not longer, affecting uh, the southern part of Australia and also keeping New Zealand on the outer edges of it. Well, guess what? July kicks off the same way. So while June was defined by low pressure in the New Zealand area, I think the best way to sum up the first half of July is colder with more high pressure out to the west. We're on the edge of high pressure and therefore that means a lot of cold air flows coming out of the Southern Ocean. So the first half of July in many regions is going to be either average or below average as far as temperatures are concerned. Although there are a few exceptions to that, mostly the west coast of the South Island, which for the first week of July is going to enjoy slightly drier, milder weather than other parts of New Zealand. But here we are on July 1st, low pressure dominates us, but it's this big high that is going to truly dominate our weather pattern, dredging this cold airflow from the Southern Ocean up and over New Zealand for about the first 10 days of the month. So let us make sense of what is going on. Let's start with the uh, Enzo outlook, having a look at what is going on with La Nina, El Nino, etc. Now, a couple of months ago, I was pushing back strongly on the mainstream outlets who were talking breathlessly about La Nina's on the way, La Nina is next. And I was like, hold on, it's like a car. You can't just drive from first gear and jam it into reverse, you've got to go to neutral first. And we are in neutral right now, very clearly we're in neutral. So what does this mean in the months ahead? Well, if you look at all the models, all the global models put into one average line, it is smack bang in the middle between El Nino and La Nina. So this is where we were earlier this year into El Nino. Now we've dropped back to average, but all the different models, some of them are picking El Nino still, others are picking La Nina. Either way, I think we're stuck in this neutral zone, which means it is chaotic. It can move around and we've seen that. At the, look at the chaos we've had. May, dominated by high pressure south of Australia. June, dominated by low pressure crossing New Zealand. And now July, once again, back to big highs and big easterlies for Australia and New Zealand potentially getting southerlies and easterlies in the mix. So it is chaotic and that is what we expect in a neutral season. Taking a look at all the, the climate models from the, around the world. The Bureau of Meteorology here in July is still leaning towards El Nino along with NOAA, uh, sorry, along with Meteo France. So Meteo France and the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia both leaning towards El Nino. And we've got other ones like the European modeling smack bang in the middle here. And others like the UKMO and the Canadian models, they're leaning towards La Nina. So you boil it all down, that's the little one there. And it suggests we're just leaning a little bit towards La Nina. But let's have a look at spring, September and November. And interestingly, the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia barely moves. And look at this. In November, it goes right back to neutral. They're the only model that does that. But the Australian ones, they cover our part of the world really well. And so they are definitely saying, hey, hold on, we don't see La Nina. The Canadians do, uh, the Americans do. They are both strongly towards, or not strongly, but they are certainly leaning into the La Nina category by the end of the year. So I think it's fair to say there is a lot of uncertainty about what is going on. And another feature to talk about, or another main point, it's for our location on Earth, here is the equator up here, Antarctica down here. What happens way up here doesn't always affect us. And so, you know, La Nina and El Nino are just part of the building blocks of our weather forecast. They are not the weather forecast. And so that's why some of you will say, so much for El Nino, so much for La Nina, because at your place, it didn't feel like it. That is normal. That is part of our location on the earth. So it's only a part of our forecast. Majority of our weather comes out of the Southern Ocean. And so it is messy and chaotic. And highs like this one are the dominant feature. And you notice in here on July the 1st, yes, low pressure over New Zealand. Yes, there's severe weather, some snow on the way this week and rain. But this is the main feature. And you can see it on this map, just how big that block of high pressure really is, going up to the tropics and down past the sub-Antarctic air flows. Into the second week of July, this is still the same high pressure zone as we kick off next week. It's only moved a short distance out towards New Zealand. And as it gets to the New Zealand area next week, it looks messy. It sort of comes in and then it might actually start to drift back to the North Tasman Sea. That's just one of the computer models. 
Uh, another word I've used to describe the weather systems this month in July, big. So we've got big highs like this, but really big lows like that one and that one here. So that means it is stormy in the Southern Ocean, as it should be at this time of the year. But the highs mean there's a bit more variety in our weather. Sometimes it can scoop up the cold air like this and bring it up. That's a cold day by the looks of it on Monday of next week in New Zealand. But then behind it, you might have milder air flows. So that's why high pressure systems are critical at affecting our temperatures. So by the third week, the high that drifted from Australia might be merging with more high pressure back over Aussie itself. So you end up with this area of high pressure over us, keeping lows to the north and lows to the south. So we might be going into a slightly drier uh, than average setup. I don't really see the temperatures being dramatically above average uh, at the first part of the month, more likely to be average to below average for the first half of July. That might change in the second half. And yes, I have seen Niwa's Outlook um, average to above average their temperatures for the whole month, kind of what they're saying. But I'm certainly seeing the first half of July in many regions average to below average as a result of the high pressure zones dredging up the colder weather. So there's quite a stream of high pressure coming in across Australia and the lows, they're still in the mix. And the ones in the north as well, we see a few more of those developing, but there's still not a lot of rain necessarily in the forecast for the New Zealand area. This is the first week of July, departure from normal, where you see the blue, it's wetter than average. Here you go, that's the percentage there. So, you know, you're talking several hundred percent above average. Doesn't take a lot in some parts of central Australia for that to happen though. If your average monthly rainfall is five millimeters and you get 10, there you go. On the New Zealand side, uh, a lot of the whites and pinks and reds mean it's average to drier than average. So there might be plenty of showers this week, but when you add them all up, not a huge amount of rain. So the wettest weather where it should be in the southwestern corner. Let's have a look at the 15 day rainfall and you'll get an idea as to where the rain will be and where it won't be. So you've got a couple of follow ups of rainfall here, but the New Zealand area doesn't necessarily have a huge amount. Most of it might actually be in the first few days of this month, including today, Monday, when I recorded this. Uh, but you can see the eastern side of Australia, lots of easterly winds coming in around that big high further to the south. That's why they're getting these 100 millimetre plus uh, rainfall areas. But the dry stuff around Australia here, similar to the dry stuff you're seeing around the eastern side. Here's a closer view of New Zealand. So plenty of westerlies and southerlies. They make rain shadows around the ranges. And so that's why you're seeing some of these areas in the lower 5 to 10, 15 millimetre mark, which isn't a lot. Good news for the eastern side of the North Island. You need a break, but Canterbury could do with the rain. And so not the best for you. The only good news is there is rain in the mountains and snow for the ski fields. So some of that rain will spill over into the waterways, but not a huge amount of rain for the first half of July. Let's get into the uh, sea surface temperatures before we wrap this up. And again, the reason why you're hearing more talk about La Nina is because the sea warms up in this part of the world, up here around the equator, this zone right here. It's a little bit warmer than average, and this side not yet colder enough below average. So we're in neutral. And it will probably stay like that for a good few more months. But we're keeping an eye on how warm it's getting in this zone here. And notice the warmer waters, waters around a big part of Australia and creeping into the New Zealand area. That map was from the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia. This one is from the Moana Project here in New Zealand, courtesy of Met Ocean and Met Service. Look at this. What a change. We were seeing this all this year, and now we're in marine heat waves popping up. Um, nothing too major, but we are getting strong heat waves in the north here, in the orange, and strong also here around Wider Upper. So that's just worth keeping an eye on over the next few months because the warmer than average, the warmer than average it is, um, the more likely you are to get rain. It's quite a simple equation. Warmer seas create more rain, especially in our part of the world. Soil moisture wise, and here's another thing that might surprise some of you, we're still drier than average. This is usually what New Zealand looks like over the decades at this time of the year. Most of the country is pretty saturated. But at the moment, that is not the case. We're seeing large dry areas in the lower North Island and a big chunk of the South Island still drier than average from a soil moisture point of view. Obviously the rain that fell the other day in the east here, that is showing up in the greens, but we are still very much uh, leaning a little bit drier than average. Although if you're in the green, you're probably not complaining at this time of the year. 
That is all from me for our Climate Watch update for this month. It's not a weather forecast, it's more of a look at the trends coming up. And I think we can sum it up by saying that massive high is going to be controlling a lot of our weather. It might start us off with colder weather, but then it could lean into a drier than average month as we go through the next couple of weeks. That is all from me. Have a great month ahead and we'll see you again one month from today.